Folks in Jessamine County are cleaning up after yesterday's strong storms left behind significant damage. We'll have a look at that cleanup as well as preparations for this next round of severe weather. Emergency management and Franklin County Fair officials are closely monitoring this evening's weather. Clouds out and about and that means some rain's on the way and we'll talk all about the severe weather threat coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon to you from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. We're tracking a potentially significant severe weather situation at this hour. Rounds of severe storms are expected to hit the Lexington area later this afternoon. And we anticipate possibly damaging winds, flash flooding, and the potential exists for isolated tornadoes. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris tracking it all on the first alert defender on this first alert severe weather day. Well, it's just now rolling through Indianapolis. Heading our direction, we still have a couple of hours before it reaches northern portions of Kentucky. Still down in the central zones, we have about three hours, so it's going to take some time to actually make its way down in our neck of the woods. Go down south, I mean, you got, you're talking about late afternoon, early evening before it makes its way down there. So there is some time, but go ahead and make those plans because it is in line and it's heading our direction. If it looks nasty on radar, you can only imagine what it looks like. Is it rolls right over your house. Like I said, still a ways away, but we do have time to make those plans. Try to get the kids back home, try to get them back home from maybe some friend's house or whatnot. And, and let me tell you, this is more of just a widespread event. High winds, yeah, it's going to be up there. I mean, that's my main concern. That's more, more like 1A. 1B is going to be flooding. Tornadoes and then uh, heading into a hail, uh, that's probably my C uh, or number three concern. So those are really low, but they're still there. All modes of severe weather will be with us, but high winds, damaging winds anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per hour, and also that flooding concern is we not only go through the day today, but that goes into tomorrow too, because it's rounds of storms, guys, one after another. Now I'll show you the new timing on this coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you. Another round of severe weather. Not welcome news for folks in some central Kentucky communities who are just now beginning to clean up from the weekend storms. This is a look at damage from Jessamine County, one of the hardest hit areas. WKYT's Hillary Thornton continues our top story team weather coverage now from Wilmore. The owner of this shed here behind me says he watched out his window as that wind knocked this storage building over. And he says he cannot even see any of the trees out here on his farm as the wind bent them completely down to the ground. Part of the metal roof of a barn now sits in a pile several feet away from that barn. Other pieces can be found on down the property wrapped around the fence. This area along High Bridge Road is where Jessamine County emergency management officials say a path of damage seems to start. More damage can be seen on down the road where a shed blew over and several pear and apple trees are destroyed. Now cleaning up what's left behind from what emergency management believed was straight line winds. A scene they say has unfortunately become common in recent weeks and one they expect to continue to see in the next few days. These crews uh, are getting out and trying to get uh, things stabilized so that the next round um, doesn't cause more damage to what's already been done. This summer has been just uh, crazy as far as the, uh, the amount of rain that we're seeing. Uh, I think it's what's causing a lot of the damage as the ground is just oversaturated and the winds are, are pushing these trees over um, and there's nothing to, to hold on to in the ground. Emergency management officials out here say winds reach speeds around 60 to 70 miles per hour when all of this damage happened. In Jessamine County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. The storm also is blamed for knocking out power for many in the Wilmore area, as well as closing Handy's Bend Road due to a large tree down there. Crews have been working hard all morning to get those problems resolved. And as Micah said a couple of minutes ago, we are tracking more showers and storms, which could bring the potential for damaging winds and flash flooding later this afternoon. WKYT's Mike Linden is in Franklin County with more on how emergency management officials are planning to keep people safe across the Commonwealth. He continues our top story weather team coverage at noon. Mike? Tonight is the first night of the Franklin County Fair here in Frankfurt. 
But emergency management officials say with weather on the way that has the potential to turn severe, that the fair could be in jeopardy. For the second year in a row, active weather is in the forecast for the start of the Franklin County Fair. Fair officials have already postponed the Miss Franklin County beauty pageant. According to fair officials, if lightning strikes within 15 miles of the fairgrounds, the rides and vendors must shut down. With the potential for damaging winds, heavy rain, and lightning, fair officials say they aren't taking any chances. We have to follow the guidelines with our Office of Emergency Management and the National Weather Service. Actually, we're going to have a meeting with them at 4 o'clock today. Mitchell says the beauty pageant has been rescheduled to Wednesday night, and he says if severe weather arrives tonight or tomorrow, that they have an emergency evacuation route planned just in case. In Franklin County, Mike Linden, WKYT. Mike, thank you. And the Franklin County Fair is open until Saturday as long as the weather cooperates. Now, with another round of storms on the way, we can help you track the storms even if you're away from the TV this afternoon. Just download our WKYT weather app. You can use an interactive radar and zoom up into your neighborhood and stay informed as to what's coming. Other news, a small fire caused big problems overnight for people living in a downtown apartment complex. They were forced out of the building when the sprinklers went off, sending water flowing through Tower Plaza at Jefferson and 2nd Streets. WKYT's Rebecca Smith has an update now on the cleanup efforts. Rebecca. A couple of people who live here tell me that they have supreme confidence that the facility has a good evacuation plan in place in case of an emergency like this one. Now, what made the situation all the more dire is the fact that it happened in one of two towers called Ballard Tower. That one houses 62 years of age and up. I was just glad nobody was hurt. Folks who live in Tower Plaza say the buzz all morning long has been what happened overnight. A small kitchen fire set off the sprinkler system, damaging some electrical wiring in apartments from the fourth all the way down to the first floor. While 11 units in total had damage, only a couple of people were displaced, according to the manager of the facility. That can be very scary having a fire in these type of buildings. Kathy Self lives here and thinks it could have been a lot worse. The majority of us are disabled some in electric chairs, so if you can't use the elevators, it's hard to go down a step in an electric chair. Again, it was only a couple of people who were displaced from this, and they're staying in a hotel until the damage here can be repaired. In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Rebecca, thank you. Tower Plaza is part of the Lexington Housing Authority. There are more than 300 units in the two towers. The U.S. Attorney's Office is meeting with county officials this summer, asking coroners in Kentucky to order autopsies for overdose deaths when prosecution of the drug dealer seems possible. WKYT's investigative team first told you about this push for autopsies in February. Now many coroners are taking extra steps to make sure overdose deaths are investigated as crime scenes. We visited Bell County, where in 2013, the highest number of overdose deaths per capita was reported. We try to, to rule out, you know, is, is there a possibility for a, for a you know, criminal charge of this? We've lost some couple, two or three generations, and the, the younger people coming up, it's where it's got to be done. It's got to be education. There's also a new drug that's almost outpacing heroin deaths in Fayette County. Our investigation into overdose deaths starts at 5 o'clock and continues at 6 o'clock tonight right here on WKYT. A hearing is just getting underway in Ashland, challenging the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling legalizing gay marriage. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis is one of a handful of local officials across the country who has refused to comply with the high court's order because she says it violates violates her religious beliefs. The American Civil Liberties Union sued Davis on behalf of two gay couples and two straight couples who were denied marriage licenses. Supporters from both sides are outside the federal courthouse in Ashland today. We have a reporter inside the hearing. We'll have more coming up later today from WKYT News. Gasoline prices nationwide are on a downward trend amid lower crude oil prices. The Lundberg survey shows the national average for a gallon of regular is two 
283. That's down two cents over the last two weeks. The average here in Kentucky, even a little lower at 271 a gallon. And the lowest price we found, 229 at a station in East Bernstad in Laurel County. Well, the highest price, it's around 299 in Louisville and Northern Kentucky. Here in Lexington, drivers are paying anywhere between 248 up to about 279 a gallon. Well, you are used to seeing Kevin Bacon on the big screen, but tonight, folks in Kentucky will have a chance to see him on a different stage. Kevin and Michael Bacon, who make up the Bacon Brothers Band, will perform tonight at the Grand Theater in Frankfurt. That show starts tonight at 7.30. After multiple blown deadlines, an Iran nuclear deal may be just hours away. We'll have the latest on a possible compromise next on Kentucky's number one at midday news. And also ahead, Jesus may have taken the wheel, but Carrie Underwood's dogs took the locks this weekend out in Nashville. We'll explain. It's coming up on WKYT News at noon.